DECA exerts its anti-inflammatory effects at a way, way lower dose than it exerts its muscle building effects. created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. RxTelevisionRxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, your weekly question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. I'm your host, Adi Faruqi. So glad you could join us for what should be another exciting installment of the forum that serves you and whatever questions you have on your mind, bodybuilding or non-bodybuilding. A very, very important note to get to right now at SpeciesNutrition.com. We have a super sale, a flash sale, a two-day sale. Fiberlize, which is by far our most popular product, uh, and I'm not talking about within the bodybuilding industry, I'm talking about in all different realms of health-related uh, activities and health-conscious individuals, is for free. That's right, Fiberlize for free. If you go right now at speciesnutrition.com through tomorrow, Thursday at midnight, so May 17th, U.S. Eastern Standard Time at midnight, that deal will expire. We're running 30% right now at speciesnutrition.com 30 percent off store wide use the promo code we did it in commemoration of the new york pro ny pro 30 that's ny pro 30 it's all going to be below in the article description sale right now and if you spend 60 dollars or more you get a free tub of fruit punch fiberlize so i wanted to specify that as well fruit punch fiberlize so for free $60 purchase with 30% off SBCNutrition.com. Uh, you get a free tub of fruit punch fiberized. Dave, you want to add anything? Yeah, you know why I did that, Sid? Because there's been a lot of like, you know, top guys in our industry that have been hearing about fiberized. I don't know where they've been the last <laughs> eight, 10 years, but so they've been asking me about it because they've been, you know, as us bodybuilders get older, you know, we have problems sometimes going to the bathroom and, uh, so I've been sending out tubs to guys and people are like, holy mackerel, this stuff changed my life, really did. And uh, so I think more people need to try it. It's one of these things that until you use it, you really don't know how great it is. I mean, not only does it obviously help you with regular bowel movements, strengthening your colon, lowering your LDL cholesterol, improving your blood sugar, fasting blood sugars, because it, it, it lowers the uh, output of glucose from the liver. But it, you know what? You just feel better because it's detoxifying your body. And, you know, it's something that we all neglect. We, you know, we talk about it, we make jokes about it, but at the end of the day, uh, once you start using a really good quality fiber supplement that comes from a really high swell rate psyllium, you're going to notice a huge difference. So I'm going to give you a free tub of it. You know, you, most of you guys are buying stuff anyway on the site. I'm going to give you 30% off the entire site. Plus, I'm going to give you the free tub if you spend $60 or more, which you're going to do anyway. And you get free shipping if you're in the continental United States if you spend over $100. So this is a you can't turn this down. If you haven't tried Fiberlize, I'm, I'm telling you, once you do, it's going to change your life. And you know what the, the truth is? If you haven't used a fiber supplement ever, start slow. Don't start off at two full servings a day. Start off at a half a serving once a day. Build up to a half a serving twice a day after about a week. And then go up to a full serving twice a day after about two to three weeks. Uh, if you've never used it, because it could cause cramping. Because if your colon is weak, which a lot of people's are, you're going to feel, you're going to feel like, well, this fiber is bothering my stomach. It's making it worse for me because I'm getting gassy and I'm getting crampy. Yeah, of course you are because it means you need the stuff. You have to just build up. It's like you don't go to the gym and, and, and do 20 sets of biceps. You know, the first time you go for a workout, you, you start off light 
and slower and you build to that. So end of the day, give it a try. This is your opportunity. I'm going to be in New York for the New York Pro. I'm giving you guys a beautiful freebie on the house when you go to Arc, when you, when you, Arc, when you go to speciesnutrition.com for the next two days. With that, we go to the questions. Again, the first two questions on the show from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. I believe before that, yes. So Dave's going to be at the New York Pro. I'm going to be there for finals. Uh, Chris Azito is going to be there as well. So we will be bringing you full coverage as well as a live stream, a full live stream. So we're working on assembling a crew for that right now. Right now, we have Armin Adibi confirmed. So he's going to be live as soon as the men go on stage at the New York Pro. Uh, tune into rxmuscle.com full live reaction show for pre-judging and finals yeah. of the New York Pro. And then, of course, in between uh, pre-judging and finals. And then, of course, after finals, uh, Chris Aceto, Dave Palumbo uh, will give you their full analysis of what took place at the New York Pro. First you question. Know, you know, I um, uh, just a, a, a note. I believe from the schedule that I saw at 12 noon is uh, Eastern Standard is when the uh, men's bodybuilding prejudging starts along yes. with the women's bodybuilding. So, so, so uh, based off what took place last year, um, yeah. uh, I was there. Yeah, so they run prejudging and finals in two different sessions. Two sessions. To, yeah. Right, to accommodate for all the different divisions. Obviously, men's bodybuilding goes on last, I believe. Oh, it does? Uh, okay. I be wrong. But uh, I would tune in at noon just to play it safe. If you're going to go on live, noon, right? Yeah, we'll send a, we'll send an alert out for exactly yeah. when we're going to go live, and then uh, specifically when the men are going to be going on stage. But again, there's going to be a live reaction show in studio, live reaction show, and then of course you're going to have yeah. Dave, Chris, um, live on site for pre judging wrap up, and then of course for finals wrap up. Yep. Back to the questions we go. Uh, Dave, your show blows. Thank you. Would running Ozempic with GH help with the potential blood sugar issues while on GH? You know, it's um, it's an interesting question because not everyone, first of all, not everyone gets high, you know, fasting blood sugars from taking GH. Some people do. Some people already have high fasting blood sugars before they even take the GH and it just makes it a little worse. Ozempic doesn't seem to lower uh, blood sugars that significantly, Okay. In some people, it seems to work better than others. It seems to make everyone lose weight because it, it, it curbs your appetite is what it does uh, because it slows the digestion of uh, and the, the movement of food through the digestive tract. Now, if the food's in your digestive tract long, you're going to feel full longer, and that's why people don't cheat between meals. Now, because of that, people get constipated too. Uh, so, not to get back to the fiber again, but... I've been watching some of these podcasts, you know, that these celebrities do, and they all are on, everyone's on Ozempic. I know even Howard Stern was talking about Ozempic and some of the people that he knew that was on it. And no one can go to the bathroom. So you know what these people do? They take laxatives. And laxatives are not, they're not good for you. They just make your, your colon release a lot of fluid and, and you get diarrhea basically from them and, and you go to the bathroom. And what's happening is these people are taking these laxatives, they're going to sleep, and then they're, they have crap in the bed. They're literally, I, I've heard women tell these stories where they actually wake up in, in like a pool of their own poop and they can't control it. So it's the dumbest way to help you go to the bathroom. Okay. If you're going to have trouble because the longer the food stays in your colon, obviously the more water the colon extracts from it and it gets hard and then it doesn't move. If you're taking a fiber supplement, it gels everything up and swells everything. It moves nice and slippery just like I just slipped, dropped my drink on the floor. It moves nice and slippery through the, the <laughs> colon and everything, you know, works well. So if you're going to especially take a GLB-1 agonist like Ozempic, Monjaro, you have to take a fiber supplement. My suggestion, fiberless. Second question, again, these two questions from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Uh, how does, and I know you've explained it before, but in a capsule, carbs, protein, and fat, how did they build Together, how do they build muscle? Can you explain the mechanism behind this? That sounds like a homework assignment, Sid, but I will try to do it briefly. You know, I don't like to do homework assignments. Obviously, protein is, is the majority of the macro requirements to building muscle because everything inside the muscle cell is predominantly made of protein. By the way, I, ha I have um, Amino Evolve dripping on my leg right now because I knocked it. I was, so, I was so excited about talking about fiber that I knocked it over. But... <laughs> you said that. So we need a lot of protein. And there's no storage facility in the body for protein, meaning that you can't store it in some kind of cells and save it for later. So you have to eat small protein meals throughout the day. That's important. How much? 
at least a gram per pound that you weigh. I like to do a little more than that. Um, the fat component of building muscle is all the cell membranes. In other words, everything, the outer portion of the muscle cells that surround the cells, those are in the cell membranes, they get broken down too. Because when you break down a muscle cell and tear it apart, you got to fix the inside and the outside. The inside is the protein. The outside is, the, is that cell membrane, that fatty sheath. That's comprised of essential fatty acids. It's comprised of cholesterol, uh, of, of, of saturated fats. So you need to have a certain amount of fat in your diet to help build that and repair that muscle. If you eat zero fat, you're not going to grow. You'll notice that. When we used to eat those, back in the 80s, we used to eat in the late, early 90s, we would eat tuna and chicken breast and rice and big potatoes. And that was it. No one ate any fat. And, and you couldn't grow. I couldn't grow from it, at least until I started incorporating fats. And that's how I learned about that. But carbs are a fuel source. It's like gasoline in your car, okay? You need a little bit for the car to run, but you don't need a full tank, you know, for it to run. So you've got to figure out how much you need. And everyone needs different amounts. I have a very fast metabolism. I can use more carbs than the, than the average person can. Most people, if you give them too many carbs and it, you fill up the tank, and the tank of your body is essentially the glycogen stores in the muscle and in the liver, once those are filled up, the rest of it goes to fat storage. So you don't want to eat too many grams of carbs because you're going to get fat. And fat, excuse me, carbs don't build muscle. They have nothing to do with the muscle building process other than the fueling the process, okay? So you do need some carbs, obviously, so that your body doesn't use the protein and fat for fuel. Instead, it uses it for building muscle, but you don't need a ton of carbs. So the protein component, most important. Fat, secondly, those two are what build muscle and repair muscle. Carbs fuel the process. Pretty simple. Let's go to our Instagram and Facebook questions. Again, if you're not already following us on Facebook, just go into the search bar, Rx Muscle on Instagram, official underscore Rx Muscle. Uh, let's go to uh, Abdil6013. The best dosage of DECA to see good results, and that in conjunction with test. I just did a, um, I just did a, uh, a little consult on the phone with my friend, and I was explaining um, to him that because they he went to a hormone replacement clinic and uh, they put him on a little bit of DECA, but they put him on DECA for his joints. He's got a bad he's got a bad elbow, so he's on 100 milligrams a week of DECA. The dosage for getting joint relief with DECA is way lower than the dosage you would need to grow muscle. So you could take 100 milligrams a week as a male. You could probably get away with 50 milligrams a week of DECA. And for a female, she could probably get away with 25 milligrams per week. And you'll get a really nice anti-inflammatory effect from it where you'll, your joints will feel better. But you're not going to necessarily build significant amounts of muscle with that. Now, if you combine it with a little bit of TRT, you know, testosterone replacement, um, you'll get a nice synergism just because two drugs are better than one. But you're not going to get a significant amount of muscle growth. However, once you seem to get to that like 400 milligram per week mark as a male, Women really shouldn't be playing around with DECA. It does cause side effects like voice deepening and stuff like that. Assuming you're a male, if you get to that 400 milligrams per week mark, you seem to now get an anabolic effect from it really good. You start building muscle. And especially if it's combined with like testosterone, even hormone replacement doses of testosterone, you'll see, an, you'll see a much greater muscle building effect from it. So you get the joint relief and the muscle building. So it really depends on what you're taking it for. You know, when I was, my, my ankle was healing, you know, and I decided to go back on HRT. I was just, my ankle was just killing me all the time. And, and it was just, it was inflamed essentially because it, I just wasn't used to walking the new way I was walking with a stiffer ankle. And I, I did literally 50 milligrams a week of DECA, you know, and it, it, for like six weeks and it made a huge difference, you know, and it reduced the inflammation. And once that inflammation is gone, okay, and you take away what's causing the inflammation, which originally in my case was the surgery I had. I never had the inflammation come back again. So that's, uh, there is two benefits to DECA and you can separate the two if you want, or you can put them together by taking like a, like a dosage. Now I wouldn't recommend going over 600 milligrams. When you go over 600 milligrams a week, you tend to get a lot of side effects. It raises prolactin levels really high. And when prolactin levels get high, we know what that does to men. It, it inhibits erection. So not a good, not a good plan. Now, some guys have erection problems on much lower doses of DECA. Some guys can look at DECA when they have an erection problem. And I don't even know if it's due to prolactin. It's just, it, it just seems to affect some guys, you know, worse than others. Another fiber lives related question. Oh, um, 
Big fiber. Uh, they're, they're, they're Dave and Sid go again promoting their own products. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Ricky Moreno wants to know, will fiber lies help with IBS? You know, irritable bowel syndrome, which is IBS, um, is usually an irritation of the bowel. Now, some people have it because of stress. You know, some people get stressed out and all of a sudden they, they get like this, they can't stop pooping. In those cases, I find that, that it, it's a godsend because fiber, okay, a lot of people don't realize this, fiber is not a laxative. And I, I kind of explained the difference earlier. It regulates your body's ability to go to the bathroom. If you go too much, it slows it down because it absorbs water, the fiber. So it, it takes away some of that like, you know, diarrhea you get. If you go too little, obviously it will help, it can make the colon contract, you know, more so it'll help you go. So with, I find with IBS, it does help uh, fibrolyze tremendously. With people who, are, however, who have like Crohn's disease or all sort of colitis who have a flare up, who can't stop going to the bathroom, it doesn't help them. It sometimes can make it worse. In those cases, you want to kind of slow down the, the digestive tract. And, that, and for some reason, because it's autoimmune initiated and the immune system involved, a lot of times fiber can irritate that. So it's kind of on a bait on a, on a, you got to know what's wrong with you, so to speak. Irritable bowel caused by stress definitely helps. Uh, let's talk about something that you addressed earlier in the week. And of course, this past weekend was the Pittsburgh Pro, which features the big guest posing featuring some of the top Olympians in the world. Yeah. Fast forward to this weekend, it's the New York Pro and the common denominator, Nick Walker. Uh, there were, there was a lot of talk, obviously, about Nick Walker and how he looked one week out. You gave a very thorough explanation. So somebody else uh, wants you to, I guess, double down on the appearance that Nick Walker had. Um, I'm not going to say exactly all that he was saying. I mean, you can go to our Instagram feed. I'm, I'm just not going to give credence to that. But if you want to, I guess, re-explain um, what you made of what Nick Walker brought in terms of guest posing and then what your theory is as far as his plan going into this weekend's New York Pro. Yeah, I, I think his coach actually reiterated exactly what I said, which was that there was no special preparation for this guest posing. He was traveling. He ate all his meals. He was drinking a ton of fluid. He he didn't change anything. He got there. He jumped up on stage, you know, put some color on and, and, and posed. It was the end of the day, you know. Big guys, as the day progresses, especially if you're drinking a lot and you're, you're eating your meals, you're going to hold a lot of water. As a matter of fact, I used to, this is, I'm such a, I'm such a masochist. I would do all my posing, like when I was getting ready for like the USA or nationals, I would, I had a big, my whole living room in my old house in, in New York was mirrored, the whole thing. And I would pose in that mirror at night, usually after, <laughs> who's that? Is that Nick? After, um, like 11 o'clock at yeah, night, so I'd eat all my meals already. And I would pose when I looked my absolute worst. I'd be bloated, you know, a little bit because I, I and I was drinking a ton of fluid all day because I was hungry. And I would pose. And I said, if I can look good or half decent at night, you know, after all those meals, then in the morning, I know I'm going to be shredded and dry. So I used to do that just masochistically because I wanted to make sure that I was posing properly. But there's a huge difference. I would drop, and I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if Nick also dropped 10, 15 pounds between going to sleep and waking up the next morning. I mean, you could... You can lose a lot of fluid overnight with peeing. I used to pee five, six times at night when I was dieting because you can't hold any, you don't hold any water because you're not eating a lot of carbs. And so Nick definitely will be ready on Saturday. I've never seen the guy out of shape. He's absolutely shredded. He was holding water and it was obvious what he was doing, which was he wasn't doing anything. He didn't prep for that. He didn't, you know, he just showed up. And said, you know what? I'll let my body do the talking next week, meaning this Saturday. And I, I think he'll be in the best shape of his life. I predicted that he will win. I went. I, I gave a Joe Namath prediction. I predicted the Nick Walker victory, even though I love Tony Burton, I love uh, Quentin Aria, I, I love uh, Martin Fitzwater. I think they all look phenomenal. And there's other guys in the lineup that are great too. But those guys, you know, in particular, seem to be the guys that are going to probably be in the top five. But I don't think anyone's beaten Nick Walker. He's bigger than everyone. He's more. He's got more muscle maturity than everyone now. He's he's going to be probably the hardest guy on stage, if not the hardest, at least comparable to the other guys. And I don't I don't see him losing. And uh, he's a professional. I, he's never shown up out of shape. He doesn't give me any. If I saw Rami look like that a week out, I might be nervous, but not Nick Walker. 
Let's go to Exolent 187. How does one successfully come off a keto diet back into carbs without a crazy rebound? You know, what I tell people to do, and it's funny because this one uh, client of mine, she, she's going to be laughing if she's watching this, but I tell everyone for two weeks after a show, you can go back on your – I always have people keep protein and fat about the same, maybe up it a little bit and add carbs in. And usually I'll, I'll tell them, depending on you know who they are, male, female, small, big – you know, anywhere from 30, 25 grams per meal to 60 grams per meal, depending on, you know, how big the person is. And then I tell them, I want one of your meals every single day for the next two weeks to be a cheat meal. It doesn't mean you have to go out of your mind and eat everything in sight. It means eat something that you like once a day. It, it, it could be sushi. It could be burgers. It could be Mexican. It could be Italian. One meal out of the day for the next two weeks. Why? I don't need to do it. I said, yeah, you have to do it. I said, because you will cheat. No matter what. So if you, because what happens is people get off shows, they're on a high, especially if they did well. They're like, I could do this forever. I'm going to get ready for another show right now. Even though it's 12 weeks from now, I'm starting to diet Monday morning. And they're back eating clean. You know, they're eating, they're eating a little more carbs now because they're, they're, they're in contest shape, but they're eating everything clean. And they think I got control of this. And then, <laughs> and then the reality sets in their body says, wait a minute. We thought the show was over. We thought we were going to start eating like cookies and shit and pizza and 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 this. They lied to us. Oh, real? What? Well, when they're sleeping, I'm going to make them dream about food. And when they're awake and they see that food, I'm going to make them absolutely go crazy and eat everything. And eventually, usually takes about a week or so. You, you go nuts and you eat everything in sight. And rat. And, and when you do that, you make yourself sick. So rather than just eat nonstop for two days, like you're on a freaking you know food binge. Give yourself one cheat meal per day. At least you know every day I get to eat anything I want once a day. The rest of the meals are, are strict because you want to make sure you get enough protein so you rebound well and you, you put some muscle on coming off the show. And then after two weeks is over, you kind of get that cheating out of your system. You go back to like one cheat meal a week and you kind of get back on a regimen. That's how I do it with my people. It seems to work really well. I don't see anyone balloon up and get super fat. It's the people who don't do it and try to think that, oh, I know better. I can control myself. And then they go crazy. I don't hear from them for like two or three weeks. And then they got, contact me. I, I lost my mind. I've been eating for two weeks straight. I haven't gone to the gym. I feel so guilty. I'm the... I said, I told you so. Let's go to uh, Beard King Lives. Your thoughts on cruising doses of test above TRT. For example, if your TRT dose is 200 mgs and say you cruise on 400 mgs, this pending blood work and side effects are managed and in safe ranges. You know my answer, guys. I don't believe in cruising, all right? <laughs> I don't have a problem with people who are like, you know, over a certain age who go back on HRT dosage of 100, 200 milligrams a week. If that's what you want to do, you don't want to go off, fine. But it, t staying on four or 500 milligrams a week cruising is not off. You're not off. You're still, you're on pharmacological dosages that have pharmacological side effects. And your androgen receptors will never regenerate, okay, and come back, you know, to, to being super sensitive on those dosages. And you're, you're still putting your body, you're not giving your body a break. You're, when, you see, if you go back to 100 milligrams a week, which is a f physiological dosage, that's what your body naturally produces. So now your body is in normal range. It might be high normal, but it's normal range. Now, now the, the regular bodily functions can come back to normal. Your receptors can kind of resensitize a little bit. But if you stay at that pharmacological or drug, drug dosage, we call it, Okay, you're not gonna re you're not really recovering. That's that's called you have a psychological problem or some sort of a disorder. If you cannot go off your drugs um, because you think you have to stay on, that's a I would go see Leslie, go see a psychologist because that's not normal thinking processes. You're not losing anything. I promise you, in eight weeks, you're not losing any significant size if you continue to train and eat well and take your supplements. End of story. Iron Hood Corporal during peak week. When do you recommend to stop taking test and when should your last day of lifting be? I always say, and and people always ask me why, and because it doesn't because you know, I always say, like, if you're gonna do a Saturday show, last testosterone shot is the Wednesday before, but I keep everyone on the other drugs. And they say, Well, why do you stop testosterone on that? I said, because it's just like another shot. Like testosterone's long acting. So if you stop it on if your last shot's on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're not missing anything. It's not, you're not gonna your test levels are not jumping down in three days. And it's one less thing you have to take and one less shot. 
because every shot you take, you, you potentially can get welted up and swelled up or take a bad shot. So I try to keep people on as little as possible, but I don't like to go off. Some people stop things two weeks out. I don't, I, why would you stop anything if you look really good? You know, um, I don't, I don't believe in that. Uh, as far as uh, last workout, last workout and last cardio is usually on Wednesday before a Saturday show. So you want to give your bodies Thursday and Friday to heal up. Because remember, when you're working out and you're breaking down muscle, okay, the muscle is, looks mushy and it's inflamed. You have to give it two days to heal so that you can see all the real separation and, and delineations and striations in the muscle. Because you want the muscle to be beautiful. You don't want it to be broken down when you're on stage. That's not going to look good. People think that working out actually makes you look better. No, that makes your brain feel better, but it doesn't make your body look better. Not training will make your body look. Have you ever taken like a week off from the gym and you go back that first day and you're like posing in the mirror and you're like, as soon as you get a pump, you're like, holy mackerel. I never saw detail like this in my body it's because your body has healed itself up. So, um, yeah, I stopped last workout Wednesday. Sometimes in people who are a little behind, I might give them some cardio on Thursday, but that's about it. And then that's, you know, not that's it till Saturday for the show. A couple of questions regarding you uh, post-shoulder surgery. Um, one was about how life has been since your shoulder replacement. That one was from Ed Giesel, the one from Adrian Johnson. How many days do you train? Uh, how many days a week, rather, do you train now? Um, says he's 53, training from the age of 15, not 53. Yeah. Have to say he's slowing down a bit, um, yada, yada, yada. So just as far as um, your workout regimen now, Post, you know, now, yeah. you know, how many months has it been that you've been able to heal up and get into a real training groove? Yeah. Um, since the, sh I don't want to jinx myself, but the, uh, my shoulders feel great. I just did a uh, 75 pound dumbbell presses, incline dumbbell presses in the gym today. It was the heaviest I've gone in a long time for four or five reps for chest. I did, you know, my, my barbell press is not that good. I don't know if it's the shoulders, just the way they're, I still feel that strong. I feel stronger on dumbbells, believe it or not. But, I'm pushing good weight. I'm in no pain. So knock on wood. Um, I, I, I got a very good result from my shoulder surgery. I'm very happy. As far as my routine goes, since I, um, my kids now go to school, I've been going to the gym probably too much because the gym is therapy for me. I really like the gym. It's a, it's, it's, it's a way to just burn off some stress and stuff like that. I, I, you know, I always tell people five days a week is the most you should go. And for the last couple of years, I was going four days a week because I was just too busy. And I'm definitely – I'm back at least five days a week now. Some days – some weeks I hit six days a week, which is too much because I can feel my body. I, I know – I can tell my body doesn't look as good when I do more days than less days. I psychologically like it, but I, I, I don't respond as well. I think five days is max, and I probably think at my age I can get away – I can easily get away with four days, but I kind of like going. So uh, it's a social – it's a social thing for me. So – Five days a week, I would say, is on average when I'm going to the gym now. And But, like, if I'm going to go, like, to the New York Pro this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I might – maybe I'll train on Sunday, you know, when I'm up there because I'm staying an extra day. I'm going back on Monday because I'm, I'm staying with my, near my sister. But I uh, I won't work out. I don't have a problem missing four days of training because I know that when I come back, I'm going to feel great from the extra rest. So – on day when I know I'm going someplace on a trip, I'll I'll train a little bit more frequently, and then I'll just take you know three four days in a in a, in a row off, and I'll really notice the recovery is really good. And when I get back in the gym, I feel great. So as as long as you don't go too many days consecutively, I think you're all right. If you, I used to, my ideal way to do it would be three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes I'll do five days in a row, two days off, but more than likely it's about five days a week. Take one more question. This one from uh, Syed Shah. I recently did blood work and everything is at normal range except my ALT is at 290. AST is at 320. I'm 28 years old. Recently started running test C, one CC twice a week after coming off for 10 weeks. Should I keep going or stop your advice? Yeah, you know, uh, I've answered this question a million times, but and, and it warrants answering again. I, I think that something has to be done where blood work for normal people versus blood work for a, a very vigorously training athlete is set up because the standard there there's there's look i've read thousands and thousands of people's blood work over the last 30 years and there's one thing that i can tell you for certain the people that train the hardest all have high quote liver enzymes 
AST, ALT, alpha phosphatase, they're all high. My, my, mine were normal <laughs> when I was going through the shoulder surgeries and my heart surgery. I, I couldn't believe it. In the, in the history of, of, of my life, I never had normal a, a, liver enzymes, but I wasn't working out or I wasn't working out very hard. I was working out and doing little light dumbbells in my house. As soon as I went back to the gym, now that I'm back lifting heavy again, they're all out of whack again. It, it's so cause and effect that there's absolutely no reality to the fact that these uh, high liver enzymes are any indication of any liver problems whatsoever. These enzymes are called metabolic enzymes, meaning they're, they're enzymes that are used for creating energy in the cells. They're in every cell. They're in heart. They're in brain. They're in skeletal muscle. And they're in liver. Why we assume when these level enzymes, when these enzymes go up, it's because of liver damage, I don't know. I don't know why they haven't reconfigured this, this test yet. It, it's not accurate for, for people who work out. All bodybuilders who train hard and who the bigger you are, the bigger the enzyme levels are. I mean, I've seen my levels were times, five times normal. If, if my liver was putting out that many enzymes because the liver cells were, were, were being destroyed because uh, I was so toxic, I'd, I'd have no liver left. Same thing with all these other guys. I see three, four times normal levels. You, you can't generate that much. It's coming from skeletal muscle. So you break down skeletal muscle, you leak these enzymes into the bloodstream, and then they measure and they, they think it's liver. And so they, with the doctors who don't know any better, they order ultrasounds because they'll – hepatitis screenings. What happens? All negative. Nothing. Nothing. You get some Once in a while, you get a little bit of fatty liver or something like that, but – Nothing. There's no liver damage whatsoever to anything. And they can't figure I don't. We don't know. I even had one doctor, uh, I had a, a client in, in Canada contact me, and they did a liver biopsy. I said, you let them do a liver? You know what a liver biopsy? They take a needle about this long, and they stick it into your liver, and they take core, a piece of your liver out, so they can you know put it under, under a microscope to see if the cells are being broken down. Of course, there was nothing wrong with her. I said it was from working out. You're a bodybuilder. So it's a very, very misleading uh, part of the uh, the metabolic panel that they run. And I give it no credibility whatsoever, okay, if you're a bodybuilder. You'd have to take probably a month off from the gym for those liver enzymes to go back, those liver enzymes to go back to normal. And no one's doing that in their right mind. But I, I did the experiment myself, not purposely, <laughs> but because I had a, I couldn't train for 12 weeks on each shoulder replacement. I saw, I saw my enzymes, they were normal. I'm like, it's, it's impossible. They, they, my, they've never been normal, but it, was, it made complete sense because I wasn't working out. So take it for what it's worth. I've said it a million times. I'll continue to say it because I know people get very upset. The doctors tell them there's something wrong with your liver. We want to do all these tests. I'm telling you, don't worry about it. That is going to do for this episode of Ask Steve. Reminder right now at SpeciesNutrition.com, 30% off today and tomorrow. So this deal will expire at midnight on May 17th, Eastern Standard Time, U.S. 30% off the entire website, free fruit punch fiber lies with purchase of $60 or more off this sale. Again, this deal expires uh, tomorrow night, midnight. Uh, May 17th, U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Right now on the channel, all new episode of After Hours, Heavy Muscle Radio, breaking down the Pittsburgh guest posing. Um, and then, of course, the full guest posing video right now on the channel. And then, actually, we just uploaded this earlier today. Uh, all new episode of the Dave Palumbo podcast, Lee Priest and his friend. Afraid, what's his name? Is it Brian? Is it Mark Rainbow? Mark Rainbow. Uh, Mark Rainbow. Mark Rainbow. It's yeah, Mark Rainbow. funny. Oh, my God. Like, seriously absolute goldmine of hilarious Lee Priest stories. Uh, you're going to want to check it out. Uh, I mean, absolutely. We may actually clip up some of these stories because there are so many and they were so in-depth and they were that funny, that worth it. So again, check that out. If you haven't already done so, subscribe below, hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss anything we have going up on this channel. If you like what you're watching, hit the like button, comment below. And as always, we appreciate all of your support. For Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.